This is a custom made Jack O' Lantern, and this is a custom made Zack O' Lantern. Let's check this one out. Hey, welcome to Zack's Tech Turf. Do you know why the Jack O' Lantern was afraid? Because it had no guts. <clears throat> Anyway, dad joke aside, the guts inside this Zack O'Lantern gaming PC are absolutely insane and we need to talk about it. In today's video, we'll go over all of the parts inside my first ever seasonal themed gaming PC. I have quite a bit of complaining to do with one of these parts. And then of course, we'll get into the gameplay and the benchmarks. I mean, I'm owning these people from a PC called the Zack O'Lantern. All right, so kicking things off with the CPU, this here is the Ryzen 5 3600 XT and actually the first XT CPU model that I featured on the channel so far. This newer and upgraded version is rocking six cores and 12 threads with a base clock of 3.8 gigahertz and a max boost clock of up to 4.5 gigahertz. This is obviously a somewhat decent of an upgrade compared to the original 3600, up to 300 megahertz on the boost clock right out of the box. And this is perfect for those CPU demanding games, video editing or even crunching away on PDFs, which by the way, you can do with the sponsor of today's video, PDF Element. Today's video is sponsored by Wondershare's PDF Element, which should be your new PDF editing software. PDF Element is perfect for those of you working with a ton of PDFs like I personally do with my pre-roll invoices and multi-million dollar contracts, and it's a much more affordable PDF editor compared to others like Adobe. This software allows you to do things like turn a paper document into an editable digital form using the OCR feature. You can create a form that's easy for others to fill out with text boxes, drop downs, and signatures, and you can even convert PDFs to other types of files such as Word documents and pictures. Grab your free download today for both mobile or desktop with the links down in the description, and there's even a $60 off discount code for you to use as well. Continuing on the parts list, we have our motherboard, and this here is the Gigabyte Aorus Elite Wi-Fi X570, which pairs perfectly with the rest of our build. This X570 board will not only support the upcoming 5000 series CPUs, but it's also rocking a solid VRM power design for cooling and overclocking. It has full PCIe 4.0 slots, including PCIe 4.0 M.2 connectors. The built-in Wi-Fi is super useful, and I personally really like the clean all-black aesthetic of it. Big thanks to Micro Center for sending this and our CPU out for this build today. And once again, Micro Center is just obviously the number one spot when it comes to these CPU and motherboard combo deals. Micro Center is an absolute dream type of a store for us PC builders. I used to go there all the time when I lived next to one just to look around at all the parts and get inspiration and they're even giving everyone a free 32 gigabyte flash drive and micro SD card if you use the link down in the description. Go get your free stuff. I mean, who doesn't like free stuff? You got free micro SD cards there. You got free headshots here. It's a win-win, man. Anyways, moving right down the parts list, we have the RAM, and this is the YOLO 16 gigabyte DDR4 kit clocked at 3,600 megahertz. And although it's like the typical YOLO kits that I've used a bunch of times already, this one is obviously a bit different. I'm absolutely in love with the orange design, and it fits perfectly well with the aesthetic that I was going for for this build. Speaking of which, to continue the aesthetic, we have the GPU. And not only did I go with this gigabyte RTX 2060 Super OC, but I also had this custom backplate made from V1 Tech. To be honest, I'm not incredibly happy with how this one turned out. It's at no fault to V1 Tech, but I really just don't like my design choice once I saw it here in person. It's indeed rocking the black, gray, and orange theme that I was going for, but I wish I would have made the design more vibrant and even got some more orange colors on there. The 2060 Super is a perfect combination for the 3600 XT, by the way, which we'll see here soon in the benchmarking section. Next up, Corsair showed some love for the Halloween build by sending some stuff out. First up is their brand spanking new CX650F RGB power supply and honestly it was really only a matter of time until we saw them create a product like this damn it was really only a matter of time. I don't think this has been out long enough to get rated on the LTT tier list, but it's indeed 650 watts with an 80 plus bronze certification. It's fully modular with all black cables, and that RGB fan that's looking beautiful is indeed controlled by Corsair's IQ software. Now, typically, I would recommend the PSU to be face downward so it can intake some fresh air if your case allows it. This one definitely does, but I obviously got to show off those RGB, so that's why I did it this way for this build. I also decided to throw some custom Formula Mod cable extensions on here, and they 
look baller AF in my opinion. Not only is this color scheme 100% perfect for this build, but they also came with the cable combs pre-installed, which was absolutely perfect for me, so I don't have to go through that boring part during my Twitch live streams. I live stream all of my gaming PC builds, including this Zacko Lantern over there, by the way, twitch.tv slash Zachstector. And if you aren't watching our Thirsty Thursday PC building streams every week, honestly, what are you doing instead? Let me know down in the comment section. Moving on to the next product Corsair was cool enough to send out was their also brand new MP400 SSD. This specifically is the one terabyte version, but this new lineup of SSDs is actually targeting people that want bigger capacities. The MP400 series can go all the way up to eight terabytes, which is crazy. Definitely enough room for Call of Duty Warzone. And this drive is rocking read speeds of up to 3,400 megabytes per second and write speeds of up to 3,000 megabytes per second. And finally, the last part they sent over was this beautiful AIO CPU cooler. And this is the H100i Elite Capellix 240. And I absolutely love how this thing looks. I did indeed use my own black fans because I didn't want too much RGB for this build, but I really just like how this AIO pump was designed. In my opinion, all I really wanted to do was get a little orange RGB action around the motherboard area, which this does perfectly. And you'll see here soon in the benchmarking section that the 3600 XT stay nice and chilly. And finally, the last core component of this build is the case. And big thanks to Dark Flash for sending this one out. It's called the Night Case. And this was 100% the exact case that I wanted for my Zacko Lantern gaming PC. But to be very honest, it was an absolute nightmare to build inside of. As some of you saw on that Twitch live stream, this case definitely challenged my PC building skills. And when it was all said and done, I think this was easily the most complicated build that I've ever completed before. Dude, I am not liking this at all, man. This case definitely looks super baller and I'm very happy with how it turned out, but Dark Flash does not make it easy at all to build inside of. Just to highlight some of my frustrations, there's no clean ways to route the cables coming out of your PSU. I kind of just have them going under this bar here and into the rubber grommet. This rubber grommet is the worst I've ever seen before and it fell out at least 10 times when building. There's absolutely no help for cable management on the back of the case and more importantly there's just not enough holes for cables to travel through around this entire case. Everything for the top half of the motherboard has to go through one of these two painful to use grommets up here at the top and then everything in the bottom half just can't possibly look clean because all the cables just have to drop underneath. Despite my frustrations though everything was able to work and everything fit properly and I decided to add all black 120 millimeter fans around the case for some airflow. I put three of them up towards the top and front for intake and then two in the back here for exhaust and that kept our temperatures very solid. With that being said, here's what the final parts list is looking like and as you can see, building a Zacko Lantern worthy gaming PC is definitely not a cheap undertaking. Obviously, you can get this exact same price of performance in a build that honestly costs like $500 to $600 less probably if you just focused on performance and not aesthetics. Speaking of performance though, we gotta run through these benchmarks and the first game up was Fortnite and in 1080p in pro settings, this Halloween themed gaming PC cranked out an average FPS of 306. Might be a sign that I probably should have tested this build in 1440p. All right, it's Fortnite time. I absolutely hate this new game mode. Let's try and make this quick, shall we? Oh, hello, sir. Oh, one shot off to a great start. Let's go. Oh, I am seeing a lot of action up here. Let's see if we can get the shotgun out again. I think I'm getting shot from behind. Sit down. Oh, come on. Give that. There's one. One more kill. Got to kill these stupid. All right. Now we have to become one of these stupid things and revenge myself. Oh, okay. I got a kill though. Let's go. Oh, this dude's not even going to have a chance. Look at this. Poor guy. No chance. He barely landed. Is it? Yeah, that's real. Oh, wait. No, that's Iron Man. Is that Iron Man right there? Did I just... That was actually Iron Man. Next up was Rainbow Six Siege and using the built-in benchmarking tool in 1080p and ultra settings, I got another ridiculous FPS average of 308. Counter-Strike Global Offensive followed and in 1080p and pro settings, which is pretty much just all low settings, I got a 368 FPS average. All right, see us go. I'm trying to do my intro here, man. All right. All right, see us go time. First time recording, let's go. Why was I trying to play there without my AWP? I'm, I'm the AWP God. That was nice, but I died. Is the AWP God going to return to see us go? Doesn't look like it. No, wait, hold on. Maybe he will. Yep, I'm back. <laughs> I'm feeling back, baby. Oh, baby. I'm feeling it. Look at this dude. Look. Sit down. Hello. Sit down. Oh, man. Too easy. All right, I'm feeling pretty good. What? I don't miss twice. 
Told you. I want to get some no scopes going. I need a scope. I need a scope there. That's fine. I still want one though. Watch this. Got one. Getting into our first tougher to run game, we have Horizon Zero Dawn and in 1080p ultra settings, I got a very respectable 83 FPS average. Rogue Company followed up after that, AKA my new favorite game that I keep saying in my build videos lately. And in 1080p ultra settings, I got 149 FPS, which is pretty good considering this game still caps us to 150 for whatever reason. Far Cry New Dawn followed and in 1080p and ultra settings, I got an FPS average of 103. For our one kind of spooky title, I included Call of Duty Modern Warfare. I didn't record any webcam footage for this one because I wanted to play the spooky Warzone game mode but not rage quit in front of thousands of viewers and here in 1080p in high settings I got an FPS average of 131. Next up was Borderlands 3, still a very GPU demanding title and in 1080p in ultra settings I got 71 frames per second. And for our last gaming benchmark we have Valorant, obviously this isn't a struggle for this type of system and in 1080p high settings I got an FPS average of 247. All right, here we go, Valorant time, baby. And these guys have no idea. He has no idea. Look at this. Sit down. Behind me? Don't sneak up behind me, man. You're going to die. Oh, there, there he is. Got him. Dude, I can own with this Vandal, man. I got to stop sniping. It's just all day. I mean, I literally can't be stopped. Not even if I tried. This is just all day. I might honestly have to go pro in Valorant. I'm serious. <clears throat> we'll edit that one out. I might need to go pro in Valorant. I'm being dead serious. Look. It's just headshot after headshot. Just wait for me. Really thought there was going to be somebody right there. Oh, there's one. There we go. For our normal 3D Mark Times by Benchmark at the end here, this Sacco Laner PC put up a pretty impressive score, honestly, of 8,536. Be sure to let me know down in the comment section what all you would do to change this Halloween themed gaming PC. Feel free to head on over to our ZTT Discord server where I'm literally in there all day, every day. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss our massive 100,000 subscriber giveaway coming soon. And finally, I hope you enjoyed this video.